This video is made possible by GreatToysOnline.com. Do drop by there to check out their awesome array of toys, figures, collectibles, and more. They know what you want. Hello everyone, this is Alan from Raymaru Files with yet another unboxing. What we have for today is none other than the Ryujin Maru from Machine Hero Wataru 2. I'm guessing that means second season. This is somewhat a special release as it is to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the series. Over here in the lower corners, you will see Bandai and Robodamashi, Robot Spirits, what have you. You also have some of the details down here. And we're gonna have a look at the rest of the box, so let's turn it around. Okay, just the name over here, some details and maybe some suggestions on the pose of our figure here. Yes, that is actually what it really looks like even in the series. It's not really deformed or anything like that. By the way, before we move on to the actual unboxing, I would like to invite you guys to follow us over at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe on this YouTube channel, but you'll find everything we make on RayMarufas.com. Anyway, let's move on to opening this box. Okay, there's a bit of a sticker here, just gonna carefully cut that out. Open the tab, and yank it out. Right, clamshell packaging, no big deal, just easy to... Okay, we can pretty much tell what we have in the package here. Also, it comes in with a printout, I'm guessing this is the manual. I remember to read the manual, guys, I embarrassed myself by not reading the manual in one of our packages. Anyway, let's move on. So let's have a closer look on the details of Ryujin Maru. Well, the base color of the parts seem to be white, while red and golden blue is painted over it. You might think that it's not super detailed, but I would say this is pretty show accurate. I've actually checked out the show just to learn more about this unit. And you can actually watch it right now on YouTube if you just look up Machine Hero Wataru. But anyway, moving back to the figure, you'll find some dragon claws on the shoulder pad. But that's about all of the extra stuff you'll see on the base unit. So how much can you move, Ryujin Maru? Okay, looks up and down. A bit of a rotation, though limited. Now this neck can actually rotate all the way around, but your horns on that helmet will have to dodge that shoulder pad. You have to be very careful. There you go. Of course, I can't imagine why you'd want to do this, but you can. Alright, let's move on to the arm. Now, first thing you want to know is that you want to lift this dragon claw over here or else the arm will not be able to fully lift. So lift that and it goes all the way there. Also goes all the way down just to show you how far it can go. And you can twist this arm. You can also bend at the elbow, which is fair enough. A little more than I expected. Now, if you look over here at the actual shoulder, you'll see that there's a ball joint, but you can also see that there's other joints right next to it. And what that means is I can do this with the shoulder pads. Yeah, you can make them look a little more heroic, making the shoulder pads point upwards, which is great. There you go. Looks a lot more heroic. You can just set it down. Now here's the surprise. You can actually pull out parts of the torso. So you can actually rotate the arm further inward or outward. This makes a much wider range of motion for the arms. You're going to be able to do a lot of nice poses thanks to that. Over here, the torso, yes, it exists, but just barely. This is how it looks in the show, and you are getting a bit of a crunch there, but not much else, not much more of a rotation. That's just the limitation of the actual design. Over here at the back, you can see well, this is where you're going to put the wings, right? And you can see that we can do a bit of a flap. I'm not sure how much more it's going to be able to do without the wings actually being there. Okay, I need to move out this arm so I can show you what the leg can do. Check this out. It can rotate all the way there. This makes it possible for Yujin Maru here to be able to make poses that face to the side and not just constantly face the front. Very impressive considering the limitations of this design. We have a kick and then it goes around this far back. Let's go. There you go. Then we have the knee here. It bends it this far, which is respectable i suppose does the job now all the way down here is the toe you can see that it goes pretty far down i don't think it looks obvious from here but the toe does separate from the heel it's not just one shoe there is a joint here there you go i think you can see it now all right let's put it back down all right so that's all of the articulation 
All right, Ryujin Maru, why don't you go ahead and show us how much you can actually pose? So for this part, I'm just gonna let the hands and the figure do the talking. And now we will go over the accessories for Ryujin Maru, starting with these hands. Let's arrange them down there. Okay, so the first ones we're gonna look at are these holding hands. They're clearly there for grabbing onto the sword. A little hard to focus, but I think you can see them now. They look like dragon claws. The other ones are here. They're more for the pointy type. I guess this is more for just the pose. And then we have the sword, which we saw in the clamshell packaging a while ago. Does have that same kind of finish, metallic. Not a complicated story to be seen. And finally, the last pieces, which would be the wings of Ryujin Maru. They can actually fold up like this. You can see that there's ports where you're gonna insert it into the backpack. So now that we've seen everything that we could see within this package, why don't we put them all together to check out how far it can go. First, we're gonna have a closer look here at the back of Ryujin Maru. You can see that at the connecting point for the backpack, there's actually a slot here, and I'm guessing that's for the sword over here. So you can sheath it over right behind them like in the show a little difficult maybe you can take out the blade no no it's definitely just a very particular angle of insertion there you go so you can carry it in this back the horn is in the way though all right you're gonna have to be a little careful with how you're gonna put it in and pose it anyway it fits perfectly actually it does look like how it should in the show that's very nice Okay, so one little detail by the way, these dragon claws are actually removable. I'm not sure if there was something in the shell that makes it removable, but there's that simple peg insert and it's back on. And finally, let's add the wings. Not a very complex process here, just match the diamonds to the openings and it's gonna be a snap-on, so you're gonna want to aim. Hard to aim with a camera in my face. And there we go, okay. Next shouldn't be too complicated just a bit of wrist grease I guess not really elbow <laughs> okay so there's our completed Ryujin Maru with the wings ready to slay human malice here we're gonna put in one of the grip hands so we're gonna try to put the sword in there but I'm actually a little doubtful because the edge of the hilt is quite wide so it's really just going to be into the hand. Alright, we've seen grips like this before. So we're going to have to take off this hand and then slide in the sword. So, okay, let me get the focus in. You can see that the hand isn't one solid piece. So just slide it under the thumb. And there we have it. The sword is now held onto and just snap it back on. And now we are in battle mode. All right, let's show off a little, yeah? You can just raise this arm, raise this, and then that. Okay, see? You know, you don't really see a lot of toys that are designed like this to be having this much posability. This many moving parts. It's actually pretty impressive. I mean, look at this. The 
the wings can flap so it actually doesn't get in the way of the arms when you try to raise them especially with the shoulder pads that's pretty great so we can stand them right here okay the fist doesn't quite match let's swap it with the open hand very easy to swap I'm not afraid of a part rigging off because it does seem sturdy enough All right there you go and I suppose this is going to be our first pose with Ryujin Maru and all of his accessories. Looks good to be honest. Even looks dynamic if you turn it on the side. That's great. You can actually make him a great display. And if you just wanted chilling on your desk, you can... So if you just wanted to chill on your desk, you just have to fold off the wings and maybe the claws as well. And even with the most basic pose, it actually does have a sense of presence on your desk. And now to review the scale. Here on the left is Iron Factory Yaroi Shishimaru Leo Convoy, or f just not Leo Convoy for short. And on the other side, you'll put in the 1x144 scale RX-78. The not Leo Convoy is around 3.5 inches while RX-78 over here should be 5.5 inches. Our boy Ryujin Maru over here stands at around 4 inches or 10 cm in metric. While not very tall, this Ryujin Maru figure is definitely wide. So you may want to remember that if you're going to consider putting him up for display. Alright, that's it for our Ryujin Maru from Machine Hero Wataru 2. When robot spirits or Robodamashi take your pick, make a figure they do focus a lot on anime accuracy but check out all of these moving parts all of these joints that are just tight able to hold a pose able to hold quite a variation of poses despite what it looks like you really think this is just going to be one of those standees but really it's a lot more than that so after playing with him for a little while ryujin maru is able to pose with a lot more dynamic stuff than we expected. Here are some of the shots that we came up with. Again, Robodamashi and Bandai have come together and have successfully brought to life children's shows from very long ago. So if you want to check out stuff like these and more, go ahead and hop onto greattoysonline.com. Thanks for joining us. If you want to find more of our stuff, you can follow us on social media. That will be Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. We do make more videos lately. And if you want to find everything that we make, you will find it on RaymaruFiles.com. We'll see you next time.